Though the average person has much greater power to control, direct, and even create the media that they consume, members of the public still find themselves being controlled by the traditional gatekeepers of mass media. The church may not be burning books as it did during the Spanish Inquisition of the late 1400s, and the government may not be explicitly controlling news media as it was in Germany under Hitler, but modern media is still being covertly controlled by the traditional gatekeepers. Deliberate, emotive messages are still being sent to the masses. Mass media refers to any means of communication that allows for the transfer of messages from an individual or group to many persons. For example, television, newspapers, social media, etc. Social media refers to any form of electronic communication through which users create online communities and share content. The term media gatekeeper refers to any individual or group that decides what information is important enough or newsworthy of being shared with the public. Throughout US history, almost every form of media has been regulated either by the government or by the media industry itself. The internet is not really regulated, it's still the wild west, but it sure is monitored and people are going to know an awful lot about you. The internet and social media are unregulated forms of media, a phenomenon which hasn't existed for a very long time. This acts as a two-edged sword, giving media users more autonomy to choose what, where, when and how they communicate or learn about the world. However, this also allows for major corporations and wealthy individuals, the traditional media gatekeepers, to shape the conversation on these media through their economic power and social influence. Thus, the average person must become an educated, critical consumer of media, rather than relying on standards and practices of industry or government intervention into questionable content. For example, the Acura Automotive company used sequence Facebook video ads to launch and market its 2015 TLX model. It retargeted viewers with link ads, driving purchase intent and lifting vehicle sales over 9%. This is just one success story listed on Facebook's Facebook for Business marketing on Facebook website. It's an interesting thing, there was a survey of media use in some Middle Eastern countries, uh, more developed Middle Eastern countries such as Saudi Arabia where there is more wealth. And the survey indicated that the people there are very afraid of being monitored via social media, not by their governments. And those governments are not as free as ours. They're much more concerned with being monitored by the private sector by corporations and advertisers who now have a total profile on them. And that's in the Middle East. Media consumers now have an opportunity to find the nexus between what traditional media gatekeepers report and the truth. However, many members of the masses remain oblivious to the manipulation they experience and the possibilities to uncover the truth at hand. One example is Facebook did a study where they wanted to see if positive posts would have a positive social influence. So without telling anyone on Facebook, they started bumping positive posts that people had further up in other people's news feeds to see if it would lead to positive energy spreading outward. But they did that without telling anyone. They effectively ran a social experiment on people's moods for hundreds of thousands of people without mentioning to anyone that they were doing it. So that's a good example of Facebook literally experimenting on people and trying to create a result. And I think they do that with content in various ways as well. The masses are still being manipulated economically, socially and emotionally, basically being told what to think about and when to think about it. An example of the socio-emotional manipulation of the masses may be seen in the French and Belgian flag filters that were offered after the terrorist attacks in those countries. The filter options allowed Facebook users to put transparent pictures of the French or Belgian flags over their profile pictures in order to show support and solidarity with the countries and the sufferers of the attacks. The Friday, November 13, 2015 attacks in Paris by gunmen and suicide bombers hit a concert hall, a major stadium, restaurants and bars, almost simultaneously leaving 130 people dead and hundreds wounded. The Belgium attacks were horrific, but not as deadly. These were both very unfortunate events that rocked but unified the world in support of the French and Belgians, especially thanks to the Facebook flag filters that raised the global awareness.
However, several questions have been raised as to the reason why no flag filters were created for the Beirut and the Nigerian terrorist attacks. Media critic Lulu Chang was very vocal on the matter. She wrote, and while a time of international mourning should never be manipulated into a tragedy contest, many have noted that Facebook's decision to introduce not only this filter, but also the safety check-in for users in Europe was noticeably limited to this most recent incident, despite the fact that just the day before, a pair of bombings in Beirut killed 43 and wounded well over 200 people. No Lebanese flag filter, however, has been introduced. The citizens of Beirut were not afforded the same attention and affection as the French, even though the attacks were only a day apart. The option to apply a Lebanese filter was not even given to Facebook users, yet all Facebook users, including those in Beirut, could apply the French flag filter. This is a clear example of social emotional manipulation by the administrators of Facebook using the social media platform. Even more recent attacks, including Boko Haram's firebombing of huts and live burning of children, which resulted in 86 deaths in Nigeria, have not been deemed worthy of a social media filter by Facebook, even though the number and types of deaths were greater and arguably more gruesome in nature than those in Belgium. The shooting and burning continued for four hours. It was not known how many scores of people were killed because bodies were still being collected. I hate to keep harping on it, but it's a business and, you know, I hate to say it, but nobody cares about Africa and they care about Europe. So in Pakistan, right, there was just a bombing the other day, right after the Belgian bombing. And, right, we didn't get near the coverage. Over 100 people, more people were killed, right, in Pakistan. And they were Christians, um, which we think would be, wow, it's, we're a Christian country, so to speak. Um, but that didn't get near the coverage. So from the business end of things, obviously, they want to put out what people are going to are going to want to say and we're just closer to Europe for a variety of reasons you could even say it's racism and I think there's a you can make an argument for that the fact that no flag filter was created to show solidarity and support for the sufferers of the Beirut and Nigerian attacks speaks to the intentional manipulation of the minds of the masses through social media another example of manipulation of the masses through social media may be seen in the addition of a celebrate pride filter in support of marriage equality which dominated social media when the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage in all 50 states. The filter was very easy to add, so easy that over 26 million people applied it within the first three days of Facebook launching and propagating the Celebrate Pride app, which still works to this day. The filter launched on Friday, May 29, 2015, and continued to gain steam over Pride weekend, eventually garnering more than half a billion likes and comments all over the world. Changing a profile picture is easily dismissed as low-effort activism, but for many people who are not typically political, it was a way to quietly show support. In contrast, No Black Lives Matter or Justice app was created by Facebook and made available to users after the controversial deaths of Corey Jones on October 18, 2015, the church members in the Charleston Massacre, June 17, 2015, or Sandra Bland on July 13, 2015. Facebook the most used social media website has been very selective in the social and world issues it pays attention to. Pointing to the bias and prejudice among its owners, operators and funders, the traditional media gatekeepers. Unfortunately, social media, like all other forms of past media, is in the control of a small few. Thus, users should not allow themselves to believe the fallacy that they control their thoughts, actions and opinions when they are constantly locked into social media. Though it may foster improved relations between businesses and their customers, social media marketing is very unethical, pervasive, and highly camouflaged. Social media marketing refers to techniques that target social networks and applications to spread brand awareness or promote particular products. Social media marketing campaigns are usually centered around establishing a social media presence on major platforms, creating shareable content and advertorials, and cultivating customer feedback throughout the campaign through surveys and contests. Social media marketing is so integrated into the everyday experience of social media users that we don't bat an eyelid when we're asked to take a survey, are requested to like a page before we can view a website, or are forced to watch an advertisement before we can stream a short clip or movie. Furthermore, rarely do we query how advertisements for products we purchased online months ago 
or links to websites we've visited before appear on our social media pages. Neither do we question why famous social media personalities post so frequently and are always wearing the most expensive or popular brands. Gal Meets glam blogger Julia Engel is one of the most recognizable Instagram models. The San Franciscan was also one of the first fashion bloggers to utilize the shopping tool developed by Dallas Networkers, Reward Style. When readers of Engel's page like a photo featuring an item she's wearing, the tool sends an email to the user with details of the item and a link to retail sites. Engel then gets paid commission on any sales made using this method. The concern in Engel's case is not with entrepreneurship, it's with the Instagram user's inability to simply see a photo, like the photo, and not be instantly marketed to. Unfortunately, all social media marketing works in this way, manipulating users in their private, most vulnerable moments to increase sales. On average, 51% of adults in the United States spend about six hours each day on digital media, with most of the time being spent on social media mobile apps. That is six hours of being bombarded with advertisements and requests from various businesses or retailers. This sort of marketing propagates materialism, which is not necessarily in the best interest of consumers in this difficult financial time. The lack of regulation makes advertising through social media extremely dangerous for children, teens and preteens. Small children and preteens may be exposed to adult products and services as well as very antisocial behavior due to the pervasiveness but lack of regulation of social media. When Kim Kardashian posts a nude self on Instagram to get media attention so as to ensure that she will be called for exclusive interviews and paid to make guest appearances all over the globe for the coming months, that image and the support, likes and comments may influence young children preteens or teens to follow suit so that they can live a similar lifestyle. Social media marketing also has several negative psychological and social effects on users. These effects are especially apparent on young users who idolize social media personalities, not knowing the amount of money, time and effort it takes to get them to look or sound the way they do. The 18-year-old who had 612,000 followers on Instagram rewrote the captions of many of the images on her Instagram page, explaining that she was being paid to promote clothes and drinks and had taken some of the selfies more than a hundred times. Taking myself off social media is a wake-up call to anyone and everyone who follows me. I had the dream life. I had half a million people interested in me on social media, on Instagram, sorry. I had over 100,000 views on most of my videos on YouTube. To a lot of people, I made it. I was signed with, I still am technically signed with, and I don't want to model at all anymore, but I was signed with one of the biggest agencies in Australia. I had one of the biggest agencies in America want to sign me for modeling and for my YouTube. I had messages and messages of big companies, brands, sponsorships, on my hands and I was in LA and I was at a pinnacle of success in what I thought it was. I was dating a guy that was way more famous, famous than me, way more successful, had an amazing car, beautiful beyond words and he was fucking depressed. And I was like, what, you, you have everything. I was surrounded by all this wealth and all this fame and all this power and yet they were all miserable and I had never been more miserable. I let numbers define me at 12 and that stopped me becoming the person that I, sh I am and that I should be. At 12 I loved writing, I loved art, I loved anything creative, I loved anything beautiful and real about the world. There are so many things I could have done with my time that I could have just enjoyed. I'm getting really emotional because I feel like at 12 I thought I was nothing. And then here at nearly 19 with all of these followers, I don't even know what is real, what is not, because I've let myself be defined by something that is so not real. Being with people in your real life, hugging people, talking to people, going out into the park, into nature, that is fucking real life. And I didn't do it for the majority of my life because I was just living in a screen, wishing that people would value me, that people would hear me, that people would just know me. And that's all that I thought I should do when it's not real. People in your real life matter. You think you're alone, go outside, go to a park, go to a beach, go somewhere. There are people around you. Go to a cafe. There's people around us. You don't have to go on social media to connect.
millions of social media users are more concerned with looking or being like social media personalities and models rather than interacting with others, the intended purpose of the technology. Thanks to data mining practices and social media monitoring, large corporations with strong online presences, for example Amazon, can track users' online behavior and market products to them using users' recorded browsing habits through their cookies and IP address. This type of marketing is not illegal, but it is unethical, as a data miner or social media monitor is actively tracking the customer, oftentimes without his or her consent or knowledge. There is a law that protects consumers, but its reach is limited. The Data Regulation Act regulates the collection and use of personal data. However, if the data is not considered personal, it's free game. The internet is public. That's what people don't understand. The internet is public. When I monitor the fact that you're watching a TV show, it's not you, Jeff Daly, watching a TV show. It's a person living in Essex County, about 21 years old, who's a college student who watched our show. It's very impersonal. Before, it would be only numbers. Now, it's actual people profile. If you don't want to ha have that I exposure, don't go on social media. Tracking innocent people's activity on their personal devices for profit cannot be justified, and the practice or capability lends itself to abuse, as highlighted by the whistleblower Edward Snowden. It may be argued that one's IP address is just as important as one's social security number in this day and age. Both of them should be protected and not exploited for profit. Social media marketing can be useful as it allows for more frequent, instant customer to retailer interactions than traditional marketing. It allows customers to be updated instantly on new products or developments and it fastens the decision to sale process for online consumers. However, social media marketing also puts serious financial, socio-emotional and psychological pressure on consumers to purchase products they cannot afford or do not need. It also causes them to strive for unrealistic, materialistic lifestyle goals and may result in a violation of personal privacy. Though it may foster improved relations between customers and retailers, social media marketing is manipulative, invasive and pervasive. Social media is attractive precisely because a lot of the content comes from our friends and family, people who we like and respect already. The owners are manipulating us outside of that, but this is not a historical innovation Powerful individuals and groups have done that for thousands of years. What's new is the way that the media has inserted itself into the conversation. Unfortunately, the power of traditional media gatekeepers did not die when social media was created. It was simply transferred to another platform. The masses are still constantly being fed images and impulses of what to think, what to think about, how to look and how to feel. This phenomenon is not new, but the options for alternative, non-traditional media sources are the average person now has the opportunity to compare paid traditional and social media to independent, unsolicited sources of information to find the truth. Social media is a very useful tool that can be used to communicate with friends and family close and far away. It may be used to ensure a valid consensus among a large group of people and it helps increase social and cultural integration across the globe. However, social media users ought to remember that it is a business and in any form of business customers are always exploited or manipulated for the highest profits possible. Thank you for watching. My name is Jefferson Daly.